This is Twit. All right, I'm going to uh, now have to stand up. <laughs> stand no, we'll up. See, see how well I can do that. Because, uh, you know, we've talked so much about the Raspberry Pi over the years. It's really impressive. I've even interviewed the uh, the creator of the Raspberry Pi on triangulation. And so, you know, we, we've talked about with, with people like Ada Fruit about, you know, projects and stuff. But I don't know if we've really covered it. From the get-go. From the get-go. So let's let's do a primer, a beginning, a beginner's introduction to the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to get up and walk over. I often feel this is what's missed in reviews and when we talk about products is getting people started. People assume you know everything. Um, and and we do that all the time. In fact, I think that's fine because we don't want to be, you can't, you can't always be a beginner's guy, but every once in a while you want to talk about it. This is an old Raspberry Pi. A lot of us it's hard to get the new Raspberry Pi, to be honest with you. A lot of us uh, have old Raspberry Pis we bought lying around for various projects. John, I know, how many do you have? Five Raspberry Pis doing a lot of audio stuff in your house, switching and controls and stuff like that. These are basically inexpensive, tiny little computers. This is a $35 computer. It has an ARM uh, microprocessor on it. Uh, but the thing that makes the Raspberry Pi so cool, and, and, and the the, the creators of this really were inspired by something called the BBC Micro, which was an inexpensive computer in the uh, 80s that uh, a lot of British kids learned about computers from. It was a very popular school computer, very popular in the home. It was kind of their version of the Commodore 64. Uh, and uh, so the creator of the Raspberry Pi, as many Brits did, grew up with that and said, we should have something for the modern generation that's inexpensive, that's easy, that they can learn about computing with. And he created the Raspberry Pi, and it has been a huge hit. Hard to get right now because of the chip shortage. That's starting to ease up. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B, but they're up to 4 now. But here's what makes the Raspberry Pi cool. Yeah, $35, but it also has I.O. So this one has four USB ports. It has a Ethernet jack. How about that? In fact, I might need an Ethernet jack, John. I forgot to. Well, I no, I won't need it yet. For the next one, we will. It has HDMI out. It has audio out. But the thing that really makes the Raspberry Pi interesting is this. It has a Jeep. They call it the GPIO. It has a IO bus that you can connect to. So you can connect this to a variety of hardware components make it do a lot of things. You can actually use it as a full computer. It has RAM. It has a processor. Uh, you put storage in, in an SD card. So it has a little SD card slot right here. In fact, micro SD. So here's a 32 gig inexpensive micro SD card. You'll put the operating system on here. And Raspberry Pi comes with its own version of Linux. They used to call it Raspbian. and now they just call it Raspberry Pi OS. You put it in in just in that slot in here. And now that's the memory. It's also the operating system. That's your hard drive. So it's got everything you'd want for a computer. People often uh, in fact I'm going to I can power it. I will power it with this micro USB. I I wonder if the new Raspberry Pis I haven't seen one have type C. I think they may still have micro USB. You can boot it up with just by plugging in. You obviously got to put the operating system in. It'll run other. It'll even run Windows. There's a version of Windows for Raspberry Pi. In fact, there's a wonderful book on learning to program Python on the Raspberry Pi that uses that version of Windows because that Windows has a has has Minecraft on it. Okay, I'm not putting it in right. I guess it's not it's not going in fully. That uh, uh, version of Windows has. Uh, Minecraft on it, which Microsoft owns, plus, I guess it's in, plus uh, an API that allows you to control it with Python. So here, you know, you want to get your 12-year-old or 11-year-old or maybe even a smart 10-year-old into computing and they love Minecraft, get a Raspberry Pi, with the, uh, get this book, Learning to Program Python with Minecraft. It's from No Starch Press. And you can put Windows on here. And you can run Minecraft on here and a Minecraft server on here, and you can program it. And they'll very quickly learn Python because it's so much fun to blow up things uh, <laughs> in Minecraft. So I'm going to plug this in and show you how it works. But first, let's tell you what the project is for today. Because most of the time, you could use this. By the way, you could totally use this with a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. And it would, be an, it would be a computer, not the fastest computer in the world, but for a kid, a fine computer. But you remember the other day, I uh, just before I left on vacation, I got this. This is an e-ink display. 
from Pi Moroni. It's called the Inky Impression, and this is a 7.3-inch, 800 by 480 pixel display. It's seven-color e-ink. Probably not fast enough. The refresh rate on this is probably not fast enough to use it as your display. And there are plenty of displays you can buy that are normal displays that you can put on. But this is what's called a hat. <laughs> they call it a hat because you can put it on top of the Raspberry Pi. You can mount it on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to show you how to do this. Most Raspberry Pis, if you get a kit, will come with a variety of different adapters. In this case, the one we're going to use is not a cable. See, that this, this matches exactly the GPIO bus. This matches exactly the pins on the Raspberry Pi. The problem is we can't get it quite on there enough. I've got these uh, standoffs in here. Let me take the standoffs off because those will also come with the kit. So we can start completely from scratch. You could try to put this on there, but you're <laughs> going to see... Oh, it is, it's just it's too thick. Well, that's why you have this. This is a little standoff. It's just an, it's just another one, right? <laughs> it plugs into here, pushes into there, and then the it's just the right depth that the Raspberry Pi, when plugged into the standoff, let me do this right. You're going to want to do this more carefully than Leo is, and you're probably going to want to ground yourself and all that stuff, right? But Leo's, as you know. A risk taker. And now this is mounted as part of, this could be a single unit. You could hang this on the wall, for instance. But there's one problem. There's a lot of flexing that's going to go on. So before I do that, I'm going to put those things that I took off back. And again, if you go to Adafruit or raspberrypi.com or one of many project sites, they'll sell this all as, as kits. They'll sell a regular display if you want. These are the standoffs that come with it. And notice... The uh, the inky is designed for this. It's got it's got three screw holes in exactly the right position for the Raspberry Pi. This is why you want to get stuff designed for Raspberry Pi because that makes it very easy. So, and they always uh, expected that you would kind of use this as a singular unit because I'm noticing you're taking up all of those GPIO pins. So it's not as if you could put something else. Yeah. You could, though, connect something into this using the uh, USB. USB, yeah. Right. So the Raspberry Pi is very programmable. I, I won't put all four in there. There's a fourth uh, standoff that you could put there. These things, so now when I put this back into the extender there like that, those match exactly the holes on the Raspberry Pi, and I can screw this in. Now this thing is is integral to the screen. I mean, it's as if... It was built into it. So this allows you to, to upgrade, to change Raspberry Pis. It allows you to play with it. You don't have to, uh, you know, it's not, it's a part of it. It's it's secure. And uh, now we're ready to go. So I could power up this Raspberry Pi, plug it into a keyboard, mouse, and monitor, and I would have a, a full computer, and it's running this inky impression. The next step we're going to save for next week which is to program it. So we're going to go to raspberrypi.com and we're going to get the Raspberry operating system. You get it for the one that you're using, in this case, the Raspberry Pi 3B. We will get the right operating system. It'll actually boot up into that operating system. And then it comes with Pi and, uh, Python installed. Python is really kind of the default language. You can write uh, for the Raspberry Pi with a variety of different languages, but Python usually has the libraries you need. In this case, the folks at Pi Moroni who make the Inky provide a Python library that gives you a full interface to these pins on here. Oh, right? nice, nice. So it makes it very easy. So they give you example, uh, all you really need, all I really need is an example program in Python that will display a picture on here. They give us that. Uh, they call it logo.py, but we're going to modify it because in order for this to do what we want it to do, which is, I think, be a clock. We'll see if it refreshes. It has to refresh at least once a second. I think we can do that. Ink displays are notoriously slow. That's why you can't use them as a regular display. But if I could even get it once a second to, uh, okay, if it, even if it can get it to update once a minute. If we want a second hand, I'll have to do it once a second. If we just want it to be by the minute, like our other clock, once a minute, we for sure can do that. Then we can make this into a seven-color display that's a little bit more controllable the the cool thing on this uh on this inky impression is it has four buttons a b c and d and their library will also allow us to to query those buttons 
and respond to those buttons. So we're going to have a library that lets us talk to the screen, display stuff on the screen, see the state of the buttons, know when a button is pressed and respond to it. The library I'm going to use is very simple. All it does is displays an image, an image on the drive. That's this little micro SD card. It displays an image on the drive on the screen. So the second part of the program will be to create that image, update it once a minute. If it's a clock, every minute will change the uh, minute hand, that kind of thing. So that's going to be in our next our next stage. But that's that's kind of how it works. And if you go to adafruit.com, you'll see they have a variety of kits. I think there's still a short supply on uh, pies, which is a little frustrating because this is the greatest little thing. $35 for the bare bones raspberry pie. Add a couple of bucks for an SD card. Uh, the kit may have many of these things. You're going to add a couple of bucks for other parts, for a screen. You probably have an old mouse and keyboard lying around that you can use. They'll just use the USB ports on here. Uh, Ethernet is nice, but it will also support Wi-Fi. So the later uh, Raspberry Pis will also support Wi-Fi. So you're really you're really set with a computer system. We'll do the uh, second part of the project. We'll get into Python. We'll get into the a uh, little coding. Uh, in weeks to come so that we can turn this into a little bit of a clock. There you go. That's that's part two because I showed you before I left the inky impression. Now we got a Raspberry Pi firmly attached uh, to it. I brought the uh, battery pack because you can use a battery pack to power it up. I'll just show you real quickly. I'll just plug it in. I can always... I hate micro USB. Yeah, the newer one has USB-C as it a does. power. Hallelujah. Confirmed. Hallelujah. Although... You know, it's not a big deal. We've got, and we got the lights. It's starting to boot up. Uh, it will, it will handle the Ethernet network. It'll handle an HDMI device. It has sound built in. It's kind of amazing what you get for thirty-five bucks these days. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Audit Pro from ACI Learning modernizes the way your team learns. Earn NASBA-approved CPE credits through engaging training curriculum led by highly respected industry experts. With more than a 90% completion rate, Audit Pro courses are proven to be the most effective and efficient way to earn your CPE credits. Learn more at go.acilearning.com slash twit. <laughs> 